Big hugs everyone and welcome to Pass the Mic. Today I have the pleasure of being with a very special man. A funky, funky, get down with it man. A soul man. You know what I'm talking about. I want you all to say hello to James and Tune. Hey! <laughs> Thanks so much for having me today. This is a treat. You know, I have to admit that I think that we both agree that when we first met, we found a spark. Yeah, and we baby. knew that, that there were some things that we had that we're going to do. <laughs> so I appreciate you having me on the show, and, and just thanks so very much. Thank you, thank you, James. So, what's our song today? Well, here's a little tune. I thought if just to be musical, I'm working on a little ditty for church. You okay, know? okay. And that's a tune called uh, "The Things, uh, the, the Trouble I Have Seen." The trouble. It's I probably have more seen. like the trouble I have been. <laughs> but anyway, let's see what we can call it. Now I'm gonna get we you. All. Would you join me? Would you join me? Absolutely. Okay, absolutely. here we go. For my ever loving days. Mercy and redemption. 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 I'm gonna change my ever loving ways. Got that done, a little bit of it anyway. Yeah. Well, thanks again for thank having you. me. Thank you. Thank you. That's so awesome. So I'll invite you. Will you, will you consider coming and singing with the church? I, I would that? love okay. to. Okay. We'll put, you heard that. I She's would love coming. to. She's coming. I would absolutely love to. That would be awesome. So I met James. He was doing sound. And one of the things that impressed me, we were doing uh, Martin Luther King, Oh Hi Day. And I thought it was so beautiful that he brought sound in for the young people to get accustomed to hearing their voice. I just thought that that was so, so passionate and so considerate. Most people don't take the time to do that. Well, that's kind of you to know. You know, I will say that the kids, there's a pure and honest joy in what they do because they haven't learned these filters that we all have in place. <laughs> so, so to be assistant to their voice on such a, a, a meaningful and prominent day, and for the work of Martin Luther King, I thought it was just a win-win. So we all won that day, I yeah. think, that we did, so. Yeah, yeah anyway. it was really beautiful. It was really beautiful. And then, so I'm thinking I'm going to explore sound with James, and then there is this beautiful, wonderful man, this musician that I had no clue about. How long have you been Playing. And what instrument? We're in the studio. There's instruments everywhere. So, <laughs> well, the first how of, many? Well, a uh, uh, second generation musician. Uh, my, my father's family we were all musicians, and he was. He, mm. I grew up. He was a stride piano player. Although he, my, uh, he left our home young. His, you know, the, the artistic thing was always in my heart. Yeah. And and so it was a, it was a struggle for me to find my vo voice at first, because because you know troublesome and divorce and all that of kids. Mm. Uh, I had to find my own musical way because yeah. mom did money part of it you know <laughs> so so but uh, but grew in uh, up in Santa Barbara and played in soul bands top 40 bands my primary instrument is drums and scenes you know oh, Motown okay. stuff well but, we can definitely hear the voice we know you got the voice baby <laughs> just, I told you he was a soul man well we'll have to work on more of that too I'm, I'm learning today I mean. but so uh, you know just the love of music compassion for it I, I you know branch off and want to produce and and mm. play and so I pick up you know I just enough to get in trouble <laughs> you know other instruments and and I've had the blessing an opportunity to play with Shaka and oh, I played with Ray Parker and, and, and was up at the several casinos in our area for a 
more time doing booking and, and you know, so I bring forth live music. I think that's kind of my calling. So no matter what, if my task is playing, promoting, teaching, I teach over to the kids at school. I think it's just to bring live entertainment and live music to the hearts and souls of those around us. It's, it's a powerful voice. It's and a we powerful need it voice. more. We do. We do. Hundred percent, James, that our schools, our kids, they need to know how to create, how to form a creative idea. So do you teach piano? Do you teach drums? Do you just teach the whole... Well, I've got students that I teach uh, uh, vocals. I've got students oh, that I teach drums, too. And uh, over, we just did a production at uh, one of the local high schools where I was teaching and, and mentoring a student interested in sound on, uh, on, on mixing sound. So we wow. were able to help him. And he was a very talented student. And for that production there at the local high school, I had the opportunity to work with Paul Massey, who just won the Academy Award for <laughs> Bohemian Rhapsody. So I will say honestly that Paul is a friend of mine, and I'm very glad because we're, we're working on a local project, a, a philanthropic record for our community here to raise some funds. It's going to oh, be a Christmas cool record, and I'll probably I'll probably get with you and tell you more about that. <laughs> okay, I'll I tell, be why in not? It. Why not? I'm telling you, we call on everybody's resources. Yeah, please yeah. call me. Call me. I'm done. If, if You're on speed dial. Call me, I'm gonna <laughs> She's let on you know. speed dial. She's on speed dial. <laughs> wow, that's so phenomenal. So you know, as you've said, musicians, we have all these different pathways. And as a teacher, musician, as a musician, teacher, touring. You tour? Did you tour? I did. I had a hit record in 1982 down in, uh, down in Lima, Peru. One of my tunes that we wrote and went down there were big tour. It was number one for two weeks on the local charts wow. there. Wow. I remember down there, it was, uh, about, no, it was 80, I think it was 1980. Uh, I think we beat out Hot Legs by Rod Stewart that week. <laughs> he was he went to number two. We went to one. But uh, gotcha. with, with that also uh, opening up to you know how powerful it is across yes. the world, across the seas. And I met Mick Jagger there. He was wow. down there and hung out with us. And wow. Sent us, so. What was the name of the song? In Mi Corazon or In My Heart. In My oh, Heart was the name of the tune. beautiful. Yeah. So. Is it on YouTube? Can we... It's not on YouTube. Oh, I mean, it might be on you, Peruvian I'm gonna YouTube. Look for, yeah, I'm going to yeah, look for it and see if I can uh, yeah, post yeah, the yeah. link. Yeah. I, I'd love to share that if that's yeah. okay. That's fine. Yeah. Now, there's a couple tunes I have out there. I've got uh, my Christmas tune, Under the Timbers, on YouTube. Nice. And that's a little tune about the birth of Christ. And uh, and then I've got also a tune, a tune that I wrote for my sister who uh, whose uh, son passed away, and that's called uh, Song for Jordan. Jordan mm. song, so that's mm. a you know it's a memorial, it's a celebration of his life, and yeah. through music again we find we find uh, solace, we find mediation of a troubled spirit, we find you know we find to be able to get out of bed in troubled times, yes. it gives us inspiration. Yes, so, so. music is very powerful, very very powerful. Repairing, yeah, <laughs> all those things, guiding. Yeah. Now I hear in your conversation that you have turned your life over to to spirit to God. When did that transformation take place for you? Thanks for asking. That's an intimate question. I think uh, initially yeah, I was I a, a single mom. Too. No, no, not, not in the least. No, I, um, I was raised by a single mom, so I kind of had my, I had to find my own ways a lot. My sister and I were like the nucleus of the family, and mom was always working. So we, my, we my. found ways to try to entertain ourselves, just her and I. So at one point, um, when we were kids, uh, some Christian um, fellowshippers came to it, and, and they were playing guitar and singing it, and I went, wow, what is that? <laughs> So that was young. I was about 13 or 12. And then I toured the world of rock and roll, girl. You know, oh, there's yeah, some baby. trouble there. Yeah. You know, there's some... there's and some fun. That's some fun, but some real trouble. Yeah, yeah. So uh, so about um, about 16 years ago, we moved to here in Ojai, about 20. So about 16 years ago, uh, I was asked to play at the uh, church here uh, as mm. on the praise team. Okay. And I remembered all those good things that God had taught when I was a young man. So I, I rededicated uh, my, my Sunday mornings to, to church. And... <laughs> <laughs> and, and a lot of my songwriting to 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 the Word of God, so I, I found great joy in it, and it just touches everybody. Again, it we talk does. about the power of music. It does the power of music, and that power goes out with people. A lot of times, I think people don't hear the word, but they can hear the music. That's so true. You know, and it I just leads got chills. them. <laughs> yeah, it, it's a very powerful thing. I'm blessed that I as well. I'm at a different spiritual center um, every Sunday, and. Having that experience of being able to share song and word with people, that the song just opens their heart and you see them. It's like they're preparing. They're that preparing. is just so true. In metaphor, the, the many of my mentors over at church say, 
that we till the ground to, mm. to receive the seed yes. with music. Yeah. And then so many times, you know, the word will stay with you, stay with, stay with you excuse me, uh, you know, you'll have a song cut in your head, stuck in your head, <laughs> but it'll be the word. And that yes. just bolsters your walk. It bolsters your, your uh, spiritual identity and helps get you through the day. It definitely does. <laughs> okay, so you find yourself here in Ojai. You're part of a praise team. You have a production. I mean, we're in James's studio. It's really sweet. I got to take a picture of all of the figurines. Not silly stuff. Yeah. Oh my goodness, I'm embarrassed. <laughs> he shouldn't be. He's got collectible items over there. Yeah. He's got collectible items. And I see on one of the studio walls the poster of the Beatles. Are you a huge Beatle fan? I, I think we all are in some ways. <laughs> I think we really all are. You know, the thing about the Beatles is during the rock and roll days, it was kind of a chord structure that was kind of in place, you know, that a lot of the, a lot of the cats were playing. And it was really based on the one, four, five of the blues, traditional blues. Yes. And the tonic being one and the four and the five. And that, that relationship. But the Beatles for us offered us some new changes to hear. They offered us different chord changes. It wasn't the standard issue. Although a lot of it was based in that, they branched off and, and created for us a musical palette that would open our ears okay. and open okay. our melody, uh, you know, uh, I should say understanding and, and the things that we heard. To, they really opened up um, just other than the standard rock and roll, stand, you know, the standard yes. rock and roll stuff. So so I think that's what, what really, and then Elvis, you know, and Elvis did some gospel stuff too now, you know. Well, no, I'm going to have to say, with the Beatles and Elvis, they studied a lot of uh, our R&B soul and our blues performers like sponges they they soaked yeah. it up they yeah. were like they were entrenched in it yeah. and they surrounded themselves yeah. with it yeah they they heard something there that inspired them and that's one of the beautiful things about music you know what is it um, is it 84 notes or is it what is, what is it they're 88 notes 88. but they're 12 tones total yeah and, yeah, and yeah. that's it, what everybody's got yeah that's what we all work with <laughs> right right 88 on the keys and we, we got. got 12 tones yeah 12 tones that we're with. and the magic is all the beauty that's been done from that, just those those notes. For, from, those for, notes. Generations, yes. for generations. And there's still the, the, the blessing with teachers like you, musicians like you, that go back and give to the school, is that you're helping our kids learn how to share their voice. Because, Amen. I mean, sampling is, is cool and it can add a great effect, but it's so wonderful to be able to create your sound. Yeah, yeah, that, that's very true. And sample, I mean, all the technology that goes into what's making music today mm -hmm. is all a part of our... They say it's not it's not the uh, paintbrush, <laughs> it's the painter. Yeah! Right? Yeah. So so that's, I think, what we find. And, and whatever technology, I've seen some kids that, that can that only relate to music in the sample sense, but they are still creating on top they of it. They are. They and are. writing... I mean, you see all these talented young uh, young men and women that are writing words because they feel that they they have to say something. Yeah. And that you know, rap music and and even the you know the, the R and B, of course, uh, you know, uh, soul music has always been something that touches me. <laughs> but the word, I think they understand that, that that there's power in the word, and they do. there's a universal language in in the in the music being the format in which they speak. Well, we see it with technology that allows us to touch the world in an instant. With, yeah, put it to YouTube, <laughs> baby. I'm talking, yeah, really. No, it's true. It's true, it's true, and we see that. Facebook. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, The it's planet everywhere. is much smaller in that regard. In the old days, remember when you wanted to hear, you wanted to hear, uh, you wanted to hear some South American music. Well, you had to go to South America. <laughs> or you wanted to hear some uh, New Orleans jazz. You had to, but now you go, I need to hear some jazz, and it come right up for exactly. you. Exactly, dial exactly. In, so. Now, how has that helped support you in your music? Well, I think that it makes more tools available to illustrate. Mm. Not only artistic mm. sensibilities, but you know, there's math involved with music. And it's I think, very mathematical. And, and so, and some of the rules and foundations to which we write and create music, there are some, you know some fundamentals. So I think it's important that, and no matter how the talent uh, sensibility is, that we kind of adhere to some of the fundamentals because it, it makes it, it makes our pathway a little easier. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, with regards to music, it makes it uh, able to speak to other musicians. Yes, it you does. Know? Yeah. Uh, as a vocalist, I'm not necessarily a musician, 
And so, I mean, I've taken music theory and the conversation that can happen between singer and musician, sometimes it's uncomfortable. <laughs> but sometimes it's that magical ride where it you is. sing something and the, and the musician picks up on it and he enhances it yes. and then you enhance that and then you're I in love a ride. That. You are. I love I, that. I'm telling you, that's, that's the, the magic. That's the magic. Oh. <laughs> I got some chills. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. That is, and those are the fleeting things that you can't count on. You but, do. you know, I think with earnest heart and endeavor that you can find those moments. I agree. And, and when you sit and play with a guy and all of a sudden he plays something that you thought he was going to play and you can enhance it, <laughs> you look at it and get that little grin. <laughs> It's quite. Fun, it's you know? a. It's the. It's the non-vocal conversation that takes place when a band uh, uh, or a group, when you're on stage and you hit that sweet spot. The sweet spot. And everybody can feel it. It's. It's a feeling. Yeah, it's a know? feeling. And even and if, if it's an audience part, I mean, if there's an audience there, they feel. They it too feel it. It's very organic. The it's energy. not. It's not pretentious. No. Nope. It, it's. You can't make it happen. <laughs> no, you can't. It just happens, and when it does, it's a wonderful ride. You know, it, it really, truly is. It, N not yeah. unlike. Uh, Meeting you, I think that you know, you think that oh, there's some things that are supposed to happen. I really believe that today, our time together and the time that we're going to yes, spend it was yes. meant to be. So, thanks of again for having me. Jesus. Oh. I'm just yammering my little tail off here. I'll tell I love you. it. It makes my work so easy. Uh, <laughs> but she's not going to invite me back. I absolutely no, will. Okay. So, I really believe in people. And when I see other people that believe in people, I was so impressed, I really was, with you taking the time to bring a sound system. And I know for some of you it may sound simple, but sound men don't do that. They Their time is booked up getting gigs or working. So to bring a system in and to encourage these young people to speak into a microphone, I was like, there's a man with some compassion. Oh, well, that's very kind of you to say. With some compassion. Well, but you know, the, the stars of that whole endeavor wasn't any one of us, the stars, I think, were really the kids that found the purpose and their voice. Yes. Uh, and some a little more outspoken than others. Yes. But yes. they were all there and they all participated. And I think that they're the stars of that day. Along with, you know, the, the event itself was, was to celebrate the work of Martin Luther King. Absolutely. And so that's, that's, that's even more that adds to the, that adds to the mix because um, it's a noble cause. And for them to find their voice within that noble cause, yeah. I think that's pretty powerful. That, that, that really is. And it takes people that have a compassion, that have compassion, that have um, a love of life. You love what you do, and it shows. Well, thank you. Again, it, another it really point. Shows. I appreciate it. <laughs> it, it. It does. It shows. So now, where you are in your life, what's your creative idea that's calling forth from you now? Well, I, I think the work that I do at church is pretty powerful. So what mm -hmm. I've, I've found great solace in, like that little ditty we just we yeah. just played. That's I'm going to probably, I'll, as soon as you leave, I'm going to probably sit down and open up the, the files here and try to do some <laughs> recording. I think recording is for me at, at this, uh, you know, latter part of my stage, uh, in my life, uh, recording, making some uh, wonderful music with, mm -hmm. with, uh, with, purposeful word yes. um, uh, to, to try to bring light to some of the issues that we have. I mean, yeah. uh, there are, we need music more than ever, oh, as you know. We, we do. do. <laughs> we do. I mean, it, it, it can soothe the, the anger and the tension and the stress, and it can also help articulate what you want to say without violence. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. and, and and for for reasons of maybe even therapy. Once you get it out and you say it, yes. you you kind of release it. It's no longer a tension on your brow, and you can, you've said it. You've you know it's, you've painted it, and now you can observe it and share it with the world. You know, and and I don't take personal like pride in what I've done, or but I I think that it's uh, it's good to be conscious of the work at hand for that the power of music yeah. and to yeah. always. The stewardship of that mm. is so important. And mm. how many times in our worlds have we seen mis mis I don't know if there's a word, but mis stewardship of the art forms for maybe personal gain yes. or for commercial gain. And I think that the work that I'll strive to do as I move forward is to make sure that the intent is honest, that or, or it's organic, and that the message pure. Ah, wow! Did I say that? Yeah, I didn't say that. I don't know where it came from. I swear to God, I don't know. Wow, where James. <laughs> Wow. Oh, my God. No, that was phenomenal. Well, thanks. Um, so um, I guess this leaves me at this place because we're here in your studio. You do sound. Mm -hmm. What encouraged you to step into sound? Because I do have a question. Okay. Sound men love to do a sound check, and we all love a sound check. 
when the room is empty, it's different when the room gets full. It is. Why it is. is it sound men don't? Not all. This so is I not all. It, I don't. This is a lot, though, but not all. They don't change the parameters. Well, yeah, I think the good guys do. Uh, there are a lot of um, wannabe musicians and or wannabe <laughs> yeah. sound men that go out and buy a nice system and they think that they got it handled. Well, mm -hmm. yeah, there's a learning curve to it. And, and I'm still learning. I'm still learning, especially with today's technology. There's yes. so many ways to go. I think just making sure that the voice is heard, the instruments are clear, is a good is a good you know uh, rule of thumb. Um, not to get yourself too in it because when you're mixing sound, it's about who's up there. Yes, you're trying to support their word yeah. or their endeavor. Yeah. So there's a selflessness that I think that some sound people don't you know instill in their own work. Mm. You have to be selfless because it's. Unless you're up there playing and singing. Exactly. You know? So I, I would say that. And, and you know, it, it is a field where there are a lot of people that, that love music. They have passion for it. They're not players. Right. Uh, and it's different. Not, I think it, it's different. Yeah. yeah. I think so as well. I, yeah. I would concur. Um, but still, it, again, it's it's a tool to bring forth whatever message. So to try to be selfless in there and try to get your ego. Like, I've seen, oh, man, I've worked with egotistical sound men that just, well, yeah, come on, can I have a little nudge here? Uh, anyway, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I was all right to work with because I can be crotchety. I'll tell you, man. I can be Kirk. Well, now what I did appreciate because I asked James. I said, "Hey, I would love to have um, a cordless mic," and um, just to speed it up, he said, "Well, you know, if it works out, I may be able to do that, or I may not, and it may just be one of those days that I don't want to deal with it." And I appreciate your honesty yeah. because sometimes we don't feel like dealing with things. And it's like, look, I've set it up. This is what it is. Let's work with it. Uh, I can accept that versus the ego of, no, this is how I'm going to do it. This is not what oh, you, right, you know. Right. I see that, the point you're making. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that point. whole thing is very different to me because we all have our days where we're like, we're in and we have some days where we're out. And there was a lot being required of you. It was a lot. It was a big, it was a big footprint for yeah. us. We're, I mean, we had, you know, several mics out there. So I hope that I wasn't, you know. No, you were great. I got the cordless mic. It was sounded fantastic. <laughs> so that maybe, maybe it was my ploy to make it more like a gift. No, I don't know. No, but I think, yeah, it was what it needed. And I, yeah. I by the way, I thought your presentation was, man, I got getting chills just Please. thinking about it. No, it was powerful. It was, uh, you had, uh, you had intent. You you were well spoken, and then you threw down some music, and then so I'm going. I need to know this person. <laughs> I need to be with, with this this person's project. So I will. I from this point on, and from that point on, I will throw my services at, at you whenever whenever you need them. Where if you you know if you got a paying gig, you got an unpaying gig. Yeah. Whatever it is, you just make sure you call me, and then oh, I'll be able to help. Thanks, I'm I love that. And then also with regard to this little musical ditty here, yes. I want to invite you back to the studio. We'll come back. We'll do some recording. We'll I do would some, love that. So let's we'll plan on that because. Okay. There's some music that has not been written yet that yes. you and I are going to do. We can write. I'm telling you. Oh, that not? would be so awesome. Yeah. I'd love to write something. Yeah. In fact, you know, maybe for the format of, of another one of your shows, that we sit down with the intent not to talk about what we're, what we're uh, uh, you and I, yeah. but sit down and, and kind of show work in progress how two people might come with creative ideas, sit down with an instrument and come up and let it document what we do and then we can even later broadcast and work on the tune and make it available for your audience. What? See? That's a deal. Okay. I love that. Deal. deal. All right. That's a deal. <laughs> I love it. So, in closing, um, we'll have to close out with our song. Okay. As we get ready to close out, I want to thank you all for joining me on Pass the Mic. This divine light, this energy, this love. This is what this show is all about. How we are creating community and beauty in the world. Remember, we are one. We hold a vision. We are creating our here and now. Just you and me. Just you and me. What a treat. <laughs> Gina, thanks for having me. I will go on for a kiss. Uh, so here, yes, here yes. The trouble I've seen Hey.
Thank you, Gino. Thanks for having me. God Thank bless you, you folks out there. We love you. The Take trouble care. I've seen. Ha! We've all done it. I'll see you next week on Pass the Mic. <laughs>